About 5,000 people live in this village of peace. They maintain a vegan and modest life, abstain from alcohol, drugs, and tobacco, worship God, and sing the songs of freedom. The community of the Hebrew Israelites of Dimona lives a life following Judean biblical tradition, but their story is far from being so peaceful. When we first got here, that's what it was, basically desert. This, yes. is, this is where our ancestors were from. Right. So we were returning back to the promised land in which yes. our forefathers yes. came from. It all started in Chicago in 1967 when Ben Carter, a factory worker, had a vision. In his vision, Angel Gabriel explained to him that he and his close ones should go to Israel and reestablish the kingdom of God, which they were exiled from thousands of years ago. Two years later, Carter came here, to Dimona, with a group of African Americans from Chicago. It was nothing like a promised land. My first impression I remember uh, Ben Gurion Airport was um, quite different from O'Hara. <laughs> you know, it was like a step back, so to speak. Being a black Hebrew in terms of being so-called black American in, in, in the United States wasn't easy. So being a black American that was a Hebrew in the United States was even more difficult. Israel refused to acknowledge their existence in Dimona. Not being able to prove their Jewish lineage, according to Jewish law, they weren't granted citizenship or any legal status. They were branded as outcasts. The people would exploit us. They wouldn't pay us. They would say, we're going to pay you next week. Or, mm. So it would be two or three months sometime before we received that pay, if we received it at all. We didn't know. As, as many have explained to me that once we got here that we wouldn't really be accepted you know in terms of our identity that we would be um, asked to convert to Judaism whereas for us that was like a slap in the face a lot has changed since then most notably a new generation was born in Israel one of these young members of the community born and raised here in Israel is Ashriel. At 22, he's a student of government in the Interdisciplinary Center in Herzliya. He speaks the language, he knows the culture, and he even volunteered for a full military service. I think I did the military because this gave me opportunity to be able to uh, expose myself and my community from another light and be able to really attack these things from another angle and show them obviously that I don't have anything that I need to prove to anyone. I, I, I'm coming you know, to show my dedication to Israel. And if you need me to do the military uh, in order to show my dedication to Israel, I'll do so. Israeli society has changed as well over the years. While serving as a minister in the 1970s and 1980s, Shimon Peres publicly spoke against the community's establishment in Israel. However, in 2008, President Shimon Peres chose to celebrate his 85th birthday in no other place than Dimona with the Hebrews, and he told them, your community is beloved in Israel. So what had made this change? He chose to celebrate his 85th birthday here with the community, and um, we definitely saw that as a turnaround. Nina, one of Ashriel's three mothers, agrees that there is in fact progression in terms of the new generation. Wasn't today wasn't like it was when we first came right, here. Yes. Right, so each day and each year it's getting better and better. I would not say that there's no progression, honestly speaking, because uh, I today at 22 years old, I do have my citizenship in Israel. Uh, and many others have uh, legal rights more than what we had uh, back then. But what I can say obviously is that according to any other uh, ethnic group uh, that has come to the land and has been here uh, over a period of time and who does uh, find that trace back to the uh, tribal lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who claims to be, uh, or who we claim to be today, uh, the fathers of Judaism, I think that we should be accepted under all of the same traditions that everybody else is accepted under. <laughs> see this shift in many areas of mainstream culture. Members of the community opened a vegan restaurant in Ben Yehuda Street, right at the heart of Tel Aviv. <laughs> Some 
Some of them participate in primetime singing reality TV shows. A local singer was even chosen to represent Israel in the Eurovision Song Contest. A generation later, they are more of an exotic minority rather than outcasts. So we're able to obviously now enter these doors and to be able to say, okay, the community of the Hebrew Israelites is here. So when we see these doors open, we want to take that full opportunity to be able to come and present it from another angle that you have uh, never uh, saw us from. They want to see the world. They want to experience what life has to give them. And it is a blessing that when they do those things, they stay true to who they are. Forty years later, Ashriel and his generation have bigger dreams. Nothing Ben Carter would have imagined in his vision. I'm, go I'm, I'm going to, uh, to be the, pres the Prime Minister of Israel.